Honourable Charles Chabot. Oh, uh, thank Charles you for Chabot. the promotion, Mr. Speaker. Um, <laughs> Give it a year. The, uh, <clears throat> there have been a number of uh, excellent contributions to the debate, although it's been short. And uh, I really just wanted to uh, make a couple of references to those contributions in uh, my third reading speech. And actually, uh, ironically, <clears throat> one of those contributions, at least in substance, if not in form, came from Paul Quinn, because uh, he pointed out that this is the sort of mistake that is easily made. Uh, and I think that was uh, an observation made by others as well. Now, one of the things we uh, need to consider as a parliament, I think, is how it is that we make these sort of mistakes, given that we have a number of checks and balances in the system. We have excellent officials. Uh, that's, I think, something that's generally agreed across the House, uh, both in the Department and in Parliamentary Council's office, advising on uh, the form and substance of these sort of changes. So uh, it probably is appropriate to reflect on whether uh, the idea of omnibus criminal law reform is a good idea. Uh, clearly, uh, the previous government thought it was on this occasion. As has been pointed out, the opposition uh, at the time supported that notion. But it is the case that uh, criminal law changes dealing with the, the detail and the minutiae of uh, the classification of offences, for example, uh, is a, is a complex uh, issue. It, it involves a level of detail that sometimes we do gloss over in the House, particularly when there is consensus on an issue. And uh, it is appropriate, I think, to reflect on whether we do pay enough attention uh, to these sorts of issues all the time. And it's particularly appropriate, I think, to consider this at the moment, because as the Minister's reminded us, we have uh, amending legislation coming into the House uh, if the government's legislative program advances to plan this year uh, to remove the summary indictable distinction, so we'll be revisiting this issue. Uh, we have the legislation bill in committee at the moment which would introduce uh, a new streamlined procedure for uh, certain uh, parts, uh, pieces of legislation certified by uh, the Attorney-General, the clerk and others to be uh, simply procedural in nature that would be uh, enacted through a different uh, form than the first, second, third reading and committee stages that we become used to understanding orders. Now we need to be very sure that uh, before we adopt that sort of procedure uh, we have in this House sufficient safeguards to make sure that that sort of streamlined enactment procedure is appropriate for legislation uh, that won't get detailed scrutiny. Uh, the sort of detailed scrutiny that frankly uh, as we now see, thanks to Judge Marshall's decision, this legislation uh, should have had and didn't get. Uh, as was said, it could have happened uh, on anyone's watch, but we need to have a look at why it did happen, and we need to have a look at how we can uh, do our best, I think, through the safeguards we have with officials and the select committee procedure, and our decisions as parties to vote in particular ways on particular pieces of legislation uh, to to safeguard against this sort of mistake being repeated uh, at least too often. The only other thing I wanted to say, sir, was to reflect on uh, the comments that have been made about retrospective legislation. Uh, it is generally offensive to legislate retrospectively, but here uh, it is pretty clear that safeguards have been observed. Uh, there, is, there has been a real attempt in the drafting of the uh, legislation to preserve rights. Uh, as they exist at the time of the uh, giving of the royal assent or as they will exist uh, when that uh, assent comes to be given to this legislation. Uh, there will be a preservation of rights to challenge uh, proceedings that have been uh, uh, mounted to uh, uh, question the virays of any uh, proceedings under the amending legislation uh, and that's appropriate uh, while taking a uh, a validating approach going forward. Uh, so, sir, with those uh, concluding comments, uh, I uh, indicate that, uh, that Labor members continue to support the, uh, uh, the validating legislation.